Hi, today we're looking at the Ditto Looper from TC Electronic. Let's have a look what comes in the box. This quick start guide is the only documentation you get in the box, but there is a manual online if you feel like you need to dig in more. Apart from the guide, you'll also receive a sticker and a promotional leaflet, and these two stick on rubber feet. That's rubber, not Velcro. On the left hand side of the pedal is an input jack, a power jack that you're going to need because there's no space for a battery, and a USB port which is only for firmware updates I think. On the right hand side of the pedal is an output jack. This pedal is not going to take up much space on your board. It's about the same size as other mini pedals and a lot smaller than what some of us might call standard pedals. Let's plug it in and see how it sounds. So let's have a look at this looper and see how easy it is to use. Um, so the basic idea is you click on it once and it starts recording. Click on it once and it goes into playback mode. I'm going to clear that by just clicking hold. Uh, so it repeats everything you've done clinically, accurately, completely, truly. Um, but brutally honestly. So if you're screwing up your timing, uh, if you play a flub note, whatever, it will just shove it in your face. Uh, so it's a good challenge for players to use this at home. It's a good practicing tool, a uh, great writing tool, um, but there is a little bit of a learning curve uh, to get comfortable with it. To get a great loop to play over, that first loop is super, super important to get your timing right. Uh, so if you're a little bit late when you come in, when you press the pedal down, if you're a little bit late when you close the loop by pressing the pedal again, um, it can just ruin everything. So uh, after the first loop, it's easier, but that first loop is super crucial. So let's uh, have a go at doing one of those now. Um, so we'll do something a little bit rocky. Um, and also with lots of rhythmic playing so we can actually uh, control it a little bit better because I'm not super great at this yet. So here we go. Best to count in first before you start playing because it really, really gives you a, uh, um, a good place to start from. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Just listen and see how well I did that. Okay, so that's not too bad. Fairly seamless. Uh, when you're in it, so we've just double clicked to stop. Um, and when you've got something in there waiting to play, the, the LED flashes. Uh, green so that's that's easy to spot what's going on uh, if I click that now uh, this is not in the uh, quick guide quick start guide um, that'll go straight into play mode from the beginning of the loop um, so that's great if you were playing something and you wanted to stop do a little interlude and then come back into it um, so let's do that and then let's try overdubbing a layer so here we go <laughs> So now let's click once and then we can record something over the top. I'm not really happy with those. Um, I wasn't really going for gold that time, but um, what said so we want to lose it? We do an overdub, we're not happy with it, but we love the original loop, we don't want to lose it. 
we just delete the last overdub. How do we do that? We go into play mode and then just hold down on the button. So here we go. And it's been erased. If we do it by mistake, we can bring back that last overdub. It hasn't completely been deleted yet. So let's uh, bring that back by holding the pedal down again. In truth, I really didn't like that overdub, so it's gone. Uh, the other thing you may have noticed while that was playing is when we get to the end of the loop, there's that, the LED does a tiny flash to say this is the beginning again. Uh, so let's put something else in there um, and um, just have a bit of a noodle, I guess. Let's have a go. Here we go. Let me start. And there's the flash, in case you didn't see it before. Okay, we're going to record something now. Now the other thing you may have noticed there was I didn't actually have to sync my recording, my overdub, with the original loop. It just records over the top, it doesn't matter if it starts at the beginning of the loop or starts just before the end of the loop and then goes through over the loop. All of those work, um, so you don't have to sync in with your click uh, at the beginning of the loop and the end of the loop like you do with the first loop. Uh, so that's all fun. Um, another thing which uh, I didn't really think about using a loop before for a long time was you can have that doubling guitar effect. Uh, so you record one part and then play along with it. Uh, let's delete that part we've got. So we'll... And now I'm going to record a doubled part. Not as seamless that time, but we do get a fatter sound, um, and that's something that you can't do without something like this. So that's a nice idea. Um, let's leave that in, uh, even though there's a little bit of a clip at the end of the loop because I missed that, uh, and then I'll just have a noodle over the top so you can uh, see how that all fits together. <laughs> So one of the things you might have noticed there was there's a lot going on and there's a bit of distortion happening because uh, basically there's too much guitar signal for the speaker. Uh, if you're using a looper, one of the things you need to watch out for is, uh, I don't know if you've ever plugged two guitars into an amp before, but everything starts getting really muddy. Nothing is really super clear. That's like what you're doing now. Uh, when you're using a looper. Some people use uh, a two amp setup where they'll use an AB switch where the loop is going to one amp and the rest is going to, or you know what they're playing is going to uh, the first amp. Uh, that is um, not a luxury that all of us will have. Um, so you just need to be a little bit careful about how much you're putting in your layers. Uh, if you've got more headroom in your amp or you're playing a lot more cleanly then you've probably got a little bit more wiggle room there. Um, but it's something to be careful about. Uh, probably playing in different places on the guitar neck with different pickups um, and things like that will give you more options, more range, because you're not going to have quite so many conflicting frequencies. Um, but 
you know, this, this is this is one of the issues that you do get with a looper that uh, not, a lot, not a lot of people will actually talk about. Um, or it's, it's not really mentioned a lot in, in anything that I've read. So um, the last thing I wanted to show you uh, before we move on to the next section of this video was something which is also not in the quick start guide, but I thought was quite cool. Um, I'm just going to pull the power plug on that and um, show you what happens. So that's uh, completely powering down and then powering up again and... Nothing is lost. I don't know how helpful that really is, but um, I thought it was it was a cool little extra in there. So, uh, And I haven't really seen anything about that anywhere either. So, Anyway, um, I think that's the overview done. So let's look at something else. So now we know how this pedal works, let's have a go at recreating the intro music for this video. So overall, I like this pedal. It's small, it does one thing simply and well. What are my likes and dislikes? I like the small footprint, the ease of use and the bang for buck. There's nothing really I can think of as a dislike. Would I recommend this to a friend? Yes, definitely, but I would suggest they consider the simplicity of the pedal and if it matches what they want to use it for. Would I buy it again if it was lost or stolen? Yes. I think I would. I've only had it for about a month, so I'm still in that novelty phase, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a really useful tool. There's more sophisticated loopers out there, but the Ditto Simplicity is a good match for me. If you're looking for a strong performance tool, you may want to go with something else. I see the Ditto as more of a practicing writing tool, and uh, I don't need more than five minutes loop time or memory slots to save different loops. There are some cheaper Ditto clones out there now, but I'd be wary of the build quality on the cheaper ones. TC Electronic is a company that I trust, so that's a big part of it for me. So that's the Ditto Looper unboxing and review. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please enter them below. If you like this video, click the thumbs up. If you want to see more, click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.